Hello and welcome you all in a special dialogue series presented by APEC Digital News Network, a special webinar series on water, water management, rainwater harvesting, and a landmark campaign by Ministry of Jal Shakti National Water Mission Government of India for creating awareness on rainwater harvesting. It is called Catch the Rain. And for that, we are thankful to Ministry of Jal Shakti, Government of India, for giving us this opportunity to partner with them for this special webinar series where we aim to connect with district magistrates, municipal commissioners, going down to panchayat level so that all the experts and thinkers can come together in one platform and they can highlight what kind of initiatives have been undertaken by them for rainwater harvesting, for making the Cas Rain campaign a success. And for the first edition of this prolonged webinar series, we have an eminent panel and eminent speakers with us. Let me introduce you to UP Singh, Honorable Secretary, Ministry of Jal Shakti Government of India. We are grateful to UP Singh, sir, for joining us in spite of his busy schedule. And he will be inaugurating this webinar series with his enlightening vision on Kazrain campaign for rainwater harvesting. We are also joined by Dr. M. Ramachandran, former Union Urban Development Secretary, and his vision will be very important for all of us to move to the right direction. And he will surely will be giving valued uh, statements and his vision on how we can make this rainwater harvesting and cash rain campaign a success. We are also joined by D. Ashok Kumar, Additional Secretary and Mission Director and National Water Mission, Mr. Jal Shakti Government of India. We welcome G. Ashok Kumar. Uh, and he will be uh, moderating the session later on after the keynote address and special address. We have two special guests, one from down south, one from down northeast. We have with us Dr. Sandeep Mahatme, District Magistrate, West Tripura, Government of Tripura. Dr. Sandeep Mahatme, thanks for joining us. I will request Dr. Mahatma yeah. sir if he can unmute. And we're thank also you. joined by Dr. Yeah, thank you so much. We're, and we're also joined by Dr. T. Arun, the Special Secretary of Revenue and District Collector, Puducherry. We welcome Dr. T. Arun. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. We are also joined by a special guest, Ms. Jyoti Sharma, President Post Nonprofits, and she will be uh, talking to us on what kind of initiatives been undertaken by Post Nonprofit for rainwater harvesting and to make the cattle rain campaign a success. And we'll be joining by two more district magistrates in the latter half of the day because uh, they were supposed to join us, but they got busy with some official uh, video conferencing. So the moment it gets over, they will join us. But before we go to Sri Yupi Singh, Honorable Secretary, Minister of Judge of the Government of India, uh, let us tell our viewers that what is the need of the hour to organize this kind of webinar, series of webinar. Our aim is, what is the aim of Ministry of Jal Shakti and National Water Mission? That is, taking the rainwater harvesting mission, Kazarin mission, to the district level, to the panchayat level, to the municipal level, and also to various institutions, so that this becomes a mass movement where we come to know or realize the importance of rainwater harvesting for securing India in terms of water management. With this, I'm again informing our viewers that we are pleased to have the guidance and mentorship of the UP Singh, Honorable Secretary, Minister of Jal Shakti, Government of India. And APEC Dialogue is grateful to the Ministry of Jal Shakti, National Water Mission, Namami Gange, for providing us with this opportunity to organize a series of webinars where we'll be going down to district level, municipal levels, and various other levels where we can get the policymakers on board and they will share the experience and this knowledge sharing will happen. With this, I'd like to request Sri Yupi Singh, Honorable Secretary Minister of Jal Shakti Government of India, to deliver his inaugural address for the series of webinar on rainwater harvesting, keeping in mind the slogan, catch the rain. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sovik, and a very good morning to uh, all my uh, uh, panelists as well as uh, um, all the viewers who are watching this uh, live. 
Uh, as we all know, and, and at the outset, I must thank both my colleague Ashok, uh, the mission director of National Water Mission and APAC team for starting this uh, very important uh, series actually. And as has been pointed out, we hope that it would be a long series and not a, a one-off kind of an event. The very reason that we are, uh, are sitting here today, of course, the few things are well known to everyone, so I need not again repeat. Like every time we know how uh, India's rainfall pattern is becoming more and more weird actually. Today, while we are sitting and we are talking of water conservation and we are talking even of a deficient rain and drought in some parts of the country, we also know that a very large part of the country is reeling under flood actually. And that is happening in some places in the last four months. There have been a rainfall of something like 1500 millimeter rainfall. The average India's rainfall is only about 1000 millimeter. And maybe a place getting a 1500 millimeter rainfall in four days was unheard of actually. And so we all knew that India's spatial and temporal variation of rainfall is very weird. We have places where even 10,000 millimeter rainfall takes place and where we have places in the country where only 100 millimeter rainfall takes place. We also know that most of our rainfall is confined to monsoon three months or so. And even in monsoon months, if you really see, out of those about 100 days of monsoon months, actually rainfall takes place or heavy rainfall takes place only on very limited number of days. And those rainy days are also coming, uh, uh, becoming less and less actually. So this need for water conservation, need for storing water, because if we get water, if we get rainfall for only 20 or 30 days, really rainy days in the year, but we require water, whether it's for irrigation, whether it's for industry, whether it's for drinking water, we require water for 365 days in a year, actually. And that is why it is very necessary that we must store the water. Now, how do you store the water? Uh, generally, everybody earlier thinking had been that, uh, let us store the water in big dams, actually. And I have spoken earlier in some of the webinars that we have we are the one country who has very large number of dams. It is not that we don't have, we have more than 5,000 numbers of large dams. In fact, in terms of the large number of large dams, we rank third. After China and USA, we rank third actually. But then everybody knows that the heydays of large dams is gone. As I have told in the past also, today also I'm saying that I will not debate on whether large dams are something good or bad. Everything has a positive thing about it, everything has a negative thing about it. But I am of the view that focus has to shift from a large dam to a small water conservation structures or water harvesting structures and the demand side management. These two are very important. And that is why this series starting from today is even more important because the one person. I am very convinced in India, I jokingly say that India basically three people matter. It's a, a PM, CM and DM. So we have this culture of PM, CM and DM. So I am convinced of the view that if district magistrates, they have the or district collectors or deputy commissioners by whatever name you call it, if they have water on their top agenda, then perhaps they will find a solution for it. Because water scarcity is a is a localized problem. It is a decentralized problem. And we have to seek the solution also for, uh, in a decentralized manner, actually. We are not a country like Israel. We are a country where except some part, there is almost a good rainfall. I would not say that even 600-700 rainfall is bad. You can manage 600-700 millimeter rainfall, actually. So our rainfall situation is not as bad as sometimes we have to be. But how do we manage that 600-700 millimeter or 500 or 1000 millimeter rainfall is a real challenge. And one way of doing it, in my opinion, is creating very large number of small structures. And not that we are creating all these small structures. See, India has a very glorious tradition of rainwater harvesting actually. We have talked here last time also that we have such beautiful what we call a stem wells or mm, wavari or vows and all, which shows that how good at one point of time we were there. I my carter is Odisha actually. When I was in Odisha, we had used to have what we call mm, uh, some of them used to call Sita Sagar, Ram Sagar. 
do sagar and there used to be very huge tanks actually those huge tanks were built even during famine people contributed like food for work program which we talk of and many of the small small those days kingdoms used to be wo raja hote the they all used to get uh, these big tanks built actually but what have been done we have allowed not only many of those traditional water harvesting structure to go to the docks it has happened in urban areas it has happened in rural areas you talk of any city you talk of bangalore you talk of delhi you talk of chennai any city big city you talk of some of them are known like bangalore was known as city of lakes actually but what is the condition of lake today actually similarly most of the districts <clears throat> uh, maybe hopefully after some time uh, mayur um, comes here a uh, mayur was cdo in uh, uh, udham singh nagar district actually he had just moved over as district magistrate of uttarkashi a couple of days back actually and in udham nagar udham singh nagar uh, the, the district team did a very excellent work actually uh, i thought if he is there he would talk about it rather i would be talking about it but 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 what they did is that very briefly that they identified all the uh, uh, water bodies in the district as per the revenue records so they found out that some maybe some 1200 water bodies existed on paper in that district and next they did is basically they did a, a ground truthing or a ground survey of all those water bodies and as was expected about 50% of those water bodies were found to be non existent either encroached permanently or temporarily and even other halves were not in the best shape actually so what next they did they did was that they got see permanent encroachment would be very difficult to remove but temporary encroachment in terms of somebody is cultivating that land or somebody is using that as a, a basically some kind of a, a dumping ground for your solid and liquid waste those can be taken care of very easily and you could find they could find that there were more than 300 ponds and tanks in that category actually so they were made encroachment free and most of the tanks were rejuvenated only under mgnrega and the people support actually no additional money under any scheme other scheme was given but what he, the district team did is that whatever they didn't have big industry there but smaller kind of people even those who were into um, a small kind of a work in the district they were asked to do what is called of csr what they call is a uh, my corporate responsibility they were only asked okay you contribute a dozer or dumper or excavator for 10 days or 15 days a month and so that generally you know mgrr is basically most of the works are have to be done manually actually but if you want to do it quickly and you want to have a very hard rock kind of a soil and all then maybe you require um, a, a, a machinery so the machinery were also got uh, 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 basically without spending any money from any scheme or from district administration and mayur has sent me sometimes back a quite a some photographs of 200 kind of ponds and i'm very sure now with the rains and all those ponds must be looking very good actually so this is only one example why i said so and that is why in fact i had requested a show that not many people are aware of that so much good work being done uh, to catch the rain actually where it falls when it falls and the best person to talk about this would be the concerned either district magistrates or the concerned municipal commissioners so maybe hopefully right now we have two on the screen maybe two more we will get during the um, uh, 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 period of this webinar so we will have four but i would like that maybe next one month virtually or maybe two months we we get at least as many as at least 100 such district magistrates or 100 such municipal commissioners actually who would be talking and because seeing is believing lot of people feel see everybody highlights the problem of water but then one should highlight not the problem so much but also one should highlight the good work which is being done for example jyoti sharma ji is here she would be talking to us a uh, more in detail in the next water talk where she is going to be our speaker actually so may she may not get a uh, more time to talk here actually but she will get much more time she will get at least an one hour almost to herself when she will talk about uh, her initiative and her thinking about water actually so with that in view i had requested a show that okay we have all kinds of webinars but let's have some webinars which will basically focus the work which is being done on the ground and i am convinced that if the district magistrates have water as a priority 
I went. In fact, I have did. Uh, I did some divisional level conferences actually, where the district magistrate or that division were called. They made their presentations that what have they done and what they are going to do. For example, I did one at Meerut, where divisional commissioners organized that, and six district magistrate from that region came. Because maybe not many people understand that part, the western part, Meerut region of. Uttar Pradesh. Even Uttar Pradesh gets good rainfall. Uttar Pradesh soil conditions is very good. But the ground water exploitation in Western UP is so much because they grow mainly sugarcane and 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 they have even in the command areas of the canal irrigation system they have a large number of tube wells which are belching water a day in and day out actually. Today the situation is pretty bad. Similarly, I went to Saharan. and divisional commissioner sanjay organized a very good uh, a meeting with the district magistrates and all district level functionaries were there actually and we talked about two things we talked about basically water conservation catch the rain and the other things we talked about was that small river rejuvenation because small river rejuvenation is also very close to my heart we cannot think in terms of rejuvenating the big rivers like ganga or yamuna or whatever unless we basically rejuvenate its tributaries and tributary i do not mean only first order tributary no order tributary in the sense that for example just you very clear ganga has yamuna as tributary yamuna has hindan as tributary hindan hindan has a kali west and krishni as its tributary so we should start working with kali and krishni then only we can make a difference to hindan if we work on hindan then we can make a difference to yamuna and if we work on yamuna then we can make a difference to ganga similarly i organized one at uh, a banda which is the divisional headquarter of chitrakoot district actually a divisional commissioner chitrakoot organized that of four districts of uh, bundelkhand actually and as you know bundelkhand is uh, known for the water scarcity actually and the work done by the district administration especially of banda uh, hiralal ji who was the previous district magistrate did He, he did he did a lot of work and that's why he was one of our speakers when in 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 our uh, the series of uh, a water talk which we organize every year on third um, a friday of every year from 3 pm to 5 pm earlier we were doing it in a physical form and now we are doing it on a um, uh, on a virtual platform actually and as i inform you on 21st of june uh, jyoti ji would be um, uh, our speaker actually so in fact i had a plan i did these three divisional conference in the month of uh, before this pandemic came in and i had planned that maybe before the rains start in mid june or so i was planning that in march and april and may i would be able to at least hold at least 25 30 such divisional level conferences and i would be able to cover at least 100 125 uh districts and district magistrates i would be talking to especially where the problem of water is uh, a little more acute actually unfortunately because of pandemic we could not do it. but it's good that uh, some of the work good work which is being done i am not saying only by the district magistrates or only by municipal commissioners they have been giving opportunity to non government organizations and other people in fact if you really see our last three four speakers on our water hmm, talk have been all basically uh, from non government organizations who have been uh, uh, whether it's arun krishnamurthy who had done very good works on lakes or whether it was uh, mr mahesh sharma who has done a very pioneer work in jhabua region or we also uh, i think a water aid ceo hmm. so all these in fact our last three speakers all came from non government organizations so what we are basically trying to do is that it is not that hmm, uh everyone would talk that so many cities like whichever uh, uh, uh in the seminar or talk or wherever i go everybody will talk of how indian cities are going to run out of ground water in 21 city will run out ground water by 2020 fortunately 2020 uh, summer is over now we are into the uh, 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 monsoon i am not saying water is not a problem but none of those cities have run out of water actually so let's not uh, water is a emergent need Uh, addressing the water issues are emergent to us but it's not something a uh, kind of a emergency it's an urgency but it's not an emergency actually. and i am i am convinced because i have been in the sector for last more than 4 years now looking after water and rivers and as a secretary as well i have spent about 2 or 8 months i am convinced that if all of us a central government the state government the district administration 
non government organizations if we all work towards uh, both conserving water as well as uh, working on demand side management improving the water use efficiency improving the cropping pattern etc there is no need that we will have to face the kind of uh, 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 doomsday which is being predicted by uh, some of naysayers actually so friends i would not like to take more time because i was and i still hope that we have another two distinct my states and we like to hear little more from them and i do hope that the audio problem of uh, our amchandran sir has been addressed actually and we will uh, he is he is a very senior colleague of uh, ours who retired but uh, i understand that he continued to be very passionate about uh, uh, issue relating to water so we will have a uh, wisdom of hearing him also and maybe today we may not get so much time to hear jyoti sharma ji she can keep her best for the um, water talk but we like to uh, get a brief this thing from her also so with this sovik i would uh, sign off here but i would be here uh, i i, I would uh, love to hear um, uh, everyone who speaks on it and if necessary any point of time i would uh, perhaps uh, make an intervention also so thank you very much thank you thank you so much uh, shri up singh honorable secretary minister of jal shakti government of india for sharing his vision and i think if i can uh, touch on two three points what he has mentioned first was very interesting dm cm and dm absolutely true uh, shri up singh that uh, a country like india is governed by all these three, three segments and dms a district magistrate is a very important part of this ecosystem uh, when it comes to implementing various programs in the Uh, ground level, and I think as we have said that APEC dialogue has created this platform, uh, aligning with your vision and minister's vision that we can get more and more perspective from district ministers across India, also municipal commissioners across India, and also whoever is working in the ground level, so that the rainwater harvesting gathering campaign is uh, touches the right chord among the right stakeholders. And I am sure, as we have said again and again, that I am hope that whenever the preoccupation of other two district ministers uh, uh, gets over uh, all of us and they have got a um, uh, video conferencing official video conference has come up so they are busy with that i am sure they will be joining us in the later half of the day and also in coming weeks i uh, uh, will try to live up to the expectation of reaching out to as many as district magistrates and municipal commissioners in later weeks and i am sure apec dialogue will continue with that with the support of minister jal shakti national water mission and, uh, and namami gange and i also like also like to uh, say one word what you have said that it's an urgency not an emergency very important part and i think india has shown that 2020 indian cities have not run out of ground water but keeping in mind the problem in future we should do more and more for rain water harvesting and i think catch the rain campaign will make it happen in near future thanks a lot shri upi singh sir for officially inaugurating this series of webinar on rainwater harvesting as the rain thanks a lot with this i move on to sri g ashok kumar additional secretary mission director national water mission minister of jal shakti government of india sir your perspective and then you can carry on with this panel where we have we have presence of two district magistrates and also ms jyoti sharma with us g ashok kumar good morning sir and good morning everybody uh as uh, secretary professor uh, sir was telling uh, the cashrin uh, champion uh, has now to come from the uh, uh, lower uh, from the ground because we were in the last 2 3 months we are preparing the ground for uh, sending the message across and uh, getting uh, endorsements from various uh, uh, senior people now uh, we are now looking forward for impact from the uh, from the ground and uh, as uh, sir right to point out we may have to start uh, this dialogue with the uh, district magistrates and the municipal commissioners and other pe water people who are actually implement ashok no sound from you oh sorry sorry i, I don't know <laughs> uh, 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 so i thank uh, apex for organizing this program uh when uh, a very short matter wednesday only we had discussed about this and uh, i thank uh, up singh sir for uh, guiding this program and he has also uh, telling rightly that uh, now that the campaign of pushing from the top uh, uh, sending the messages endorsements from the top is over we should now get feedback from as many collectors as possible as many districts as possible 
and all of us were proud that we could, uh, in the district as uh, dm and the type of freedom we enjoy to implement our things as a dm is very very interesting so uh, he rightly said that uh, we should now uh, get feedback from the uh, field, field from the officers who are working in the field actually implementing it there is no dearth of money because mandrega in the mandrega a lot of money has been added uh, given to the district collectors additional 40000 crores was given um, by the government of india to take up uh, the work predominantly water conservation works so there is no uh, dearth of money and the uh, four senior secretaries of the government of india returned to the collector uh, to the chief secretaries uh, also uh, three months back to use all money uh, these money uh, and converge uh, big convergence in um, taking up the water conservation work so there's a lot of work happening in the field but the emergency or urgency of the whole matter is that uh, we get gains uh, in the in three four months as the secretary said in the uh, last one month and maybe another two three months only we get gains and water cannot be created so we have to catch this rain when it falls in the next uh, two months and use it and utilize it store it and utilize it for the next uh, uh, till the next rain comes so it's very very uh, very very important that we catch this rain secretary also mentioned about two important issues one is about the demand side management demand side management we are working the national water mission is working on the demand man side management we had a, a program called uh, sahi fasal where uh, we uh, we try to uh, convince farmers to go for uh, uh, water intensive crops sir himself had, uh, attended all the three uh, uh, major workshops with the farmers in uh, amritsar in uh, uh, aurangabad and in kurukshetra where about 1000 farmers uh, each attended these uh, conferences and we could convince the farmers to a large extent to move from uh, paddy which is a very water consuming crops and this year uh, punjab and haryana has actually uh, made a lot of intensive uh, efforts to move uh, to to take the farmers move from uh, paddy to other uh, crops so that is one demand side management which we are telling and second is about uh, getting this uh, water bodies uh, uh revived which uh, some of you have done so today i am not uh, but, uh, going into uh, our preaching from i said we require uh, we want to listen from the ground uh, what uh, you are doing two points only which i wanted to mention in the, uh, the whole scenario of the campaign we had envisioned the campaign from february onwards in a in a different way we thought that every district will have a rain center a rain center is basically a, a place where Uh, a person with a technical knowledge will be available with a mobile phone who can guide people to make how how uh, make a rainwater harvesting structure because every state has its own different social uh, so, uh, so soil structure you require an appropriate rainwater harvesting structure there so a person a local person who has a local knowledge of the soil uh, soil strata there can guide technically the persons who wanted to make the uh, appropriate structure there that's what the concept of the rain center and many of the uh, uh, places they, they have started it it has to be still pushed because uh, that, that, that that's the challenge which we have now uh, many of the places we had uh, some ngos coming forward to start this rain center it will not be a government setup all i need is a person with a technical knowledge sitting there in the uh, with the rain center with the mobile phone and trying to talk to the people and giving them technical guidance on what the type of structures to be built so that's very important second is about uh, the uh, advantage of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the um, uh, campaign one is of course the supply side management we want to store the rain water second we notice lot of urban flooding is happening everywhere every city is having lot of urban flooding again sound problem mashok mashok is it can you hear me yeah is it i don't know done automatically i don't know sir sir uh, the no, uh, second point uh, second point was about the uh, one is about the conservation part of it and second point which we are facing is the urban flooding so we want uh, one solution for urban flooding is uh, flooding is Uh, to catch the rain and store it at the at at your different locations so that this water doesn't come into a large area and become a big water pool. 
So one solution of uh, this flooding would be catch the rain and storing it in your own compound so that this water doesn't uh, flow out and become a big water pool. So these are two solutions which uh, we, we uh, the benefits of the catch the rain campaign which we thought. My request the uh, uh, district collectors to uh, talk because we it is time that we listen to them and uh, listen to their problems and uh, listen to their uh, you know you know in, in innovation so that we can give it to the other people for your information we have started a, a, a special web email cash the rain dot nwm at gmail dot com i repeat again cash the rain dot nwm dot at gmail dot com to collect information from various districts so i am getting lot of information from various uh, districts and also from uh, large institutions like uh, uh, the police uh, police units and then air force airports and all these things who are doing some work but we require more and more uh, information pictures and this so i request all the people who are attending this uh, video conference uh, to send their suggestions their uh, picture, pictures of the activities they have done on catch the, catching the rain to catch the rain of nwm at gmail.com we have kept this at gmail.com because so our normal government website has a gov.in address and sometimes it requires a lot there's a problem with uh, communicating to that address the large file can be travel we can't do there that's why we kept it at gmail.com so please send your pictures uh, your activities and your videos of what you have done to the cash the rain dot nwm at gmail.com and as uh, as secretary said we will be continuing the series will be a series we'll be engaging more and more uh, district ministers and municipal commissioners in campaign and wish all of them we have some period left three four or almost few months left for catching the rain let us not lose hope we should actually ensure that every district has a rain, rain water harvesting uh, rain tender which guide the people technically thank you thanks a lot so i uh, now we have with us uh, so mr uh, arun and uh, uh, sandeep uh, marbe is there Uh, can I uh, request uh, Arun to start off with uh, the uh, activities he has done as the secretary of uh, in uh, in Karikal? They are one of the uh, neighboring districts of Pushyari uh, in which uh, has done tremendous work on rainwater harvest sector, and I am sure Arun also would have done a lot of work. So I request Arun to uh, tell his uh, uh, experience then and his uh, suggestions. Thank you. Uh, yes sir uh, respected sir and uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, since i was told to give a presentation through this we will be i'll just i'll just one two three seconds to share the presentation sir so that it will be sir paaka mudiyuma avanga so is it possible to view sir yes yeah. it's it's on screen yes we can see you can move to move right Sir, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. 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 Yes, of course the uh, desilting activities and all were also going on but we we started to it to be much more catchier so we have two districts in pondicherry sir one is karaikal one is pondicherry here we started nirumurum and in karaikal it was namgir so it is nirum means water urum means habitat means it's a village or something like that so uh, this, this term was more catchy to the people more emotionally connected sir so that's why we started nirumurum Uh, uh pondicherry is a blessed that we have uh, we have huge number of water bodies here and uh, each water body is interconnected with the canals and we have a good system of this uh, french french also were uh, more keen on developing these water bodies and canals and uh, interconnections sir so we just uh, we have 64 water bodies in that 84 are tanks uh, and remaining are uh, uh, ponds of various sizes of course sir why conservation i need not stress on this uh, forum so we are all aware sir but our activity in impact it started with removal of encroachments 
so from there we started focusing on conservation of the water bodies sir that, that is how our shift focused so um, so we 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 compose we it has five component one is of uh, water conservation and rainwater harvesting renovation of all the water bodies then uh, reuse and recharging of the structures uh, intensive afforestation and watershed development sir in that how we started was uh, the we started checking the uh, uh, revenue records see the, the the fmb the revenue records with the help of the vao tahsildars and the commissioner we started uh, surveying each and every water body of pondicherry district sir and uh, and each and every water body village wise we were able to uh, display it we were able to put a unique number uh, which i'll i'll be sharing in the next one so we started geotagging those water bodies also so most of the by this exercise we were able to recover more than 50 to 60 water bodies which were not known as a water body means it was just as a playground it was known as a playground it was known as something else as a private property something like that so with the help of the revenue records wherever it is mentioned as a water bo water body in the revenue records we, we started uh, recognizing it as a water body and when then we started surveying it demarcation and all those kind of activities were done this was the first step so by this we were able to make a uh, inventory of all the water bodies of our district by that the count came as 69 694 water bodies in pondicherry sir this was our uh, first then we started with wherever there was a water body we started displaying a, uh, we started putting the display board with the name of the water body the ring survey number even the fmb sketch map was also pasted on the board and a toll free number and a, and a, some some sort of a mobile number the ring survey number the extent of the water body and the unique number say if if in this photograph you can see the unique number 1111680 it means one is district number one is another uh, name of the subdivision name of the taluk name of the uh, commune panchayat and name of the village something like that we started with the each and every water body so this has helped in uh, mobilizing people that uh, this is a water body people came to know that it's a water body so this was one and the entire exercise was with convergence of the uh, dif different departments and the community movement sir we involved csr to a larger extent uh, the bank and a lot of ngos came forward rotary club round table say round table had desilted more than 10 water bodies and some of all the major companies like mrf tvs they they took up uh, minimum minimum two to three water bodies in fact we involved hotels and resorts also many hotels and resorts have taken multi couple of water bodies even schools have come forward once the community movement started so by this exercise we were able to desilt 197 ponds and tanks sir, of various extent and with the help of uh, narega we could uh, desilt 3 kilometers of canals interconnecting this so by this exercise it was totally a movement of the ngos and the and the companies almost all the companies banks schools even for, uh, sir uh, in the in the women's day celebration one of the organization came forward to celebrate uh, women's day by desilting a water body so that was the amount of uh, uh, community movement with respect to the uh, uh, revival of the water body sir by this we were able to recover many water many ponds which were not known as ponds earlier so this was one of the efforts sir by this as of now uh be before corona sir that is in the month of march we were having only 191 water bodies but after corona it was slowed down from last one month we have again taken we have again restarted six more water bodies were added in the process of desilting sir so this one these are few photographs i just for uh, uh, just we have added uh, this was like you can see sir this, this was earlier it was no, not known as a water body but uh, then suddenly we started uh, uh, knowing that uh, based on the records we immediately recovered it these were some of the plantations where there we started uh, renewing those the plantation encroachment and we started as a water body and water also started refilling this within a within a span of 10 to 15 days so these are some of the photographs sir i and with this sir uh, like we wanted to use the leverage the it technology we started a mobile app called jal abhileka neer padiv means it's a inventory of water body it's available this app is in four languages since pondicherry has french uh, the telugu malayalam and tamil and of course english in this uh, there is a geotagging facilities also there are grievances on a real time basis the photos can be uploaded here the, we have kept a option of donate for a pond adopt a pond if anyone wants to celebrate anything they can just adopt a pond and they can celebrate their uh, whatever it is sir so by this uh, we could uh, desilt 197 water bodies as of now but our continue our effort will continue further sir 
then with respect to rain water harvesting sir we, we issued an order to all the government departments to institute rain water harvesting structures and all cinema theaters and uh, they 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 complied and they have installed the rain water harvesting structures in their campus our uh, afforestation activity since uh, this also is club with the nirumurum titam we we started planting 1 lakh trees uh, almost 52 trees have been planted sir uh what we are planning is wherever a water body has been formed along the water body along the bund we are planting the trees and we are uh, any ngo have come forward school kids school children everyone have come forward and we are giving the trees to them to uh, plant sir along the water uh, sir our way forward is uh, sir with this sir uh, uh, there is uh, based on the central ground water authority's report 15 feet uh, on an average uh, the water level has raised sir uh, so this is one one positive thing which we could notice and at many water and many tanks and ponds are even now filled though there is no uh, the, the last rainfall only was in the month of november december here in this part but still water is still present in many of the tanks sir so the objectively also we can see sir and it was i can say that it's all because of the community movement and we, uh, now our future plan is to put around a walkway some sort of a recreation place with some open gym and other kind of activities which which we are planning sir in all the water bodies so that it would be some sort of a recreation and it would sustain that all these efforts will be uh, uh, made to maintain for a few more years sir these are the things sir and uh, we, our we have completed it or when honorable president came here sir our honorable cm uh, released a book on this neeru murum also these are some of the tweets from uh, uh, mayor sir and anil purup sir and from jal shakti abhiyan also they have also uh, uh, tweeted on our uh, uh, activities sir so this is about our uh, initiative sir thank you sir for this opportunity uh, thank you arun very uh, interesting presentation and a uh, lot of thing you know i was remembering uh, neeru meeru we had in at andhra pradesh we had a campaign called neeru okay. meeru uh, when chandrababu nadu Niru, Niru. We are coming with Niru, Uru. <laughs> it is just, uh, it, it is just a. Is you. We started this diesel thing, uh. but when we used to keep as Jal Shakti, you know, like people were, uh, uh, people were not able to understand. That is why we started with our. Uh, the idea is, our whole idea is to have conserve water, not yes, the sir. name of the campaign, whatever it is, but get yes, the water sir. campaign just and. Yes, sir. I will share that with us. I told you, I gave a web, 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 website. Uh, or oh, sorry email cash the rain dot nwm at gmail dot com yes, please send it to us photographs a uh, lot of things are even here time a lot of things are available with us also we will give a platform as the second is our uh, keeps on telling we need to collect all these good practices and put it so our website at the nwm will be we are keeping all these good practices so yes, others also can help you so uh, very nice very nice effort around i hope you uh, uh, will continue to good work and particularly so because you are Area receives rainfall, repeating monsoon. So you are yes. still uh, rain, you are not receive the rain monsoon rain for the rest of the country. So, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Continue the rain till it comes back uh, as repeating monsoon. Yes, Very sir. Very nice, yes, sir. sir. You would like to speak in the? No, no, no. Let let them speak. But of course, I I must thank Arun for not uh, uh, not only doing a very good work but making a very excellent presentation. In a very short time, he could basically tell what has been done, and I was, I was quite impressed actually. Even for example, when we are struggling, even getting a rainwater harvesting at places like uh, uh, airport of airports or cantonments or uh, uh, ordnance factories, etc., which have huge land, I was very happy when he when that when rainwater harvesting, as he said, has been done even in the uh, cinema halls actually. Uh, and 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 what is very important is that uh, you are we are talking about the name. What is very important that the people emotional connect with the water. See, we have uh, we we are a country where we have been. Mantri ji, to bolte rehte hain ki hamara desh aisa desh hai jahan jal ko jagdish mein. We have been worshiping our uh, water actually. But over a period of time, I think it's not only someone rightly said that you are talking connecting rivers. You first connect people to the rivers actually. So connecting water to the people is very important. So because people are, we all are very sentimental people actually. So unless I, 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 I always used to mention. Today I did not mention, but when I went to Banda in the evening, the district magistrate organized uh, on seven thousand wells, a uh, five women are uh, lighting lamps actually. So the whole idea of lighting lamp, it was like a kind of a Diwali to to respect water actually on seven thousand wells of the um, 
district actually so that's the way once we connect people to the water the people that respect for water needs to be brought back it's a water when i talk it means water body rivers lakes everything and so so you have been doing a very good work and kindly continue doing good work and uh, keep sharing some good stories with us as shok has said uh, these stories need to be brought to the light actually because not only uh, basically that uh, uh, people will praise you but people will get inspired as well. and especially those people who feel very despondent that nothing is being done and nothing can be done at least they will find in the sense that everybody is talking how the water table is falling down nobody is talking that maybe if this can come through scientifically or through uh, a scientific organization that because of these if the water table what you have said has gone up by 15 feet this is something which, which needs to be highlighted in my opinion actually recently i have been dealing dealing with a ngt case where ngt is time and again saying you close down all the industries in over exploited critical semi critical area on the ground that water is falling down actually if we can show that no it is not that the not only the fall cannot be arrested it could be other other way around it could first let us arrest the fall that itself would be some kind of a, a good achievement and there after the increasing the water table actually so very good presentation i don't keep doing good work keep sharing things with us and i'm i i'm i'm not uh, if, if a shok is doing uh, on on tweet and all i don't tweet still but if a shok does it then he should tweet such good uh, initiatives actually okay sure, thank sir. you thank you sir thank you sir uh, thanks arun and we have uh, the, from the south we had arun and from the northeast we have uh, uh, sandeep padme uh, uh, tripura district tripura district dm with us sandeep uh, please share your experience and your uh, uh, initiative thank you Uh, good morning to everyone as uh, secretary sir has mentioned that if the district magistrate uh, makes water as a priority then uh, huge differences can be made in the district uh, let me start my uh, conversation uh, with the story uh, ashok kumar sir has mentioned that urban flooding is a very predominant phenomenon in our country as uh, nowadays so my first day in the west tripura started with the floods uh, urban floods Uh, i was posted in a uh, kovai district and uh, the moment i was posted here the it was raining throughout the night and it rained so much that i had to enter my district uh, crossing several uh, landslides so uh, i had uh, rescued some people also on the way and uh, rescued the people who were uh, flooded in the agartala as well as in the west tripura district <clears throat> so in the year 2018 we started uh, giving priority to the water also although earlier there was a priority but we started uh, doing in a much systematic way uh, every year since last 2015 16 17 and 18 there had been a flood in the uh, capital of tripura that is agartala and uh, some several years the floods used to occur at least 7 to 8 times in a year during the monsoon period and it used to cause uh, huge damage to the i mean properties houses as well as uh, agriculture and uh, uh, you include everything and the uh, government uh, used to pay huge amount of money under hdrf to these people uh, so uh, then uh, then we thought that we, we should do it in a uh, much a systematic way how we can reduce the urban flooding as well as uh, focus on the decentralized uh, storage of water so we have a tripura space application center uh, we used uh, we took the help of the technology we identified uh, we we do uh, took the detailed locations where the uh, flooding is taking place not only in the urban areas but also in the rural areas which are the catchment areas which are the small small tributaries uh, just like uh, secretary sir has mentioned that if you have to focus on the rejuvenation of the big rivers we should start from the back side so that's how we focus from the smallest tributaries uh, here people call it as charas and uh, the charas leads to rivulets and rivulets then joins to the main river the main river here is hawra uh, river so that's how we focus mainly on the charas and uh, the uh, places where the uh, i mean uh, water is carried out so as such we identified 500 such uh, places where uh, the water needed to be storage in uh, stored in the decentralized manner uh, and accordingly uh, the detailed plan was prepared we involved all the departments mainly forest rural development and panchayat department block wise target for this 500 uh, big water bodies was given the Uh, no, uh, tripura uh, there is a culture of uh, creation of water bodies mainly for the fish pond 
but uh, people don't uh, do the big the water bodies are usually in small size pukur, for the pukur. household purpose but in this entire campaign we call pukur i will yeah in the in this yeah yeah it's called as pukurs so it's uh, it's part of the culture uh, uh, in bengali as well as the state of tripura even tribal people uh, tribal people have this uh, pukurs but we uh, increase the size of ponds we prefer that uh, each pond should not be less than 1 acre so that's how we the uh, locations were identified the beneficiaries were identified this uh, uh, the training and the uh, sensitization of all the 500 beneficiaries was done at the block level uh, by the panchayat by the rd as well as forest department and uh, all these beneficiaries were taken under mgnrg uh, here the uh, most of the beneficiaries they have uh, rega card uh, they are rega card holders so there is no problem in the beneficiary selection the entire process was started in 2018 and uh, out of this 500 so as of now we have uh, com- completed more than 350 water bodies uh, we could not complete rest 150 because of number of reasons uh, that the uh, lok sabha elections uh, we almost exhausted all the money in the just prior to the lok sabha so almost all our activities uh, were disrupted and again uh, the peak season uh, the corona pandemic affected so again the work got disrupted but 350 in such a small span of time it's itself is a big achievement and uh, more than 20 crores of uh, liters of water is already being stored we are not we have not made the actual assessment but uh, uh, considering the technical estimate it is not less than 20 to 25 crores liters of water so this much of water we have prevented as of now in flowing into the rivulets as well as to the haura and i am very happy to announce that the intensity of the floods has gone down last year the intensity was much less until now there is no flood as of now so every year in the month of june july and august we used to witness at least uh, three to four floods and as of now we don't have a single flood as of now and uh, we are hopefully that uh, hoping that uh, we will complete all the 500 remaining uh, water bodies i mean uh, the whatever remaining water bodies are there in uh, next year so that the uh, all water which uh, uh, rain water can be stopped in those locations in addition more than 3000 uh, micro irrigation channels were constructed uh, under mg nrga so those were also done in a systematic way uh, the beneficiaries were identified and uh, uh, the work got 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 executed in addition we also have huge area under rubber plantation uh, if you see the uh, statistics after kerala uh, tripura is the second largest producer of rubber in the country and this uh, uh, rubber r- rubber gardens are also uh, varying in big sizes so some gardens are 5 5 hectares some are 10 hectares so whatever land we could identify in the rubber hectares we const- we uh, we uh, dig the water reservoir pits in those uh, water gardens so our objective was to wherever wherever we get the land wherever we can store the rain water we should focus because now uh, to do the 350 water bodies we had spent lot of time as well as it is it is difficult because there are a lot of constraints uh, when we are executing this kind of works but 3000 more than 3000 uh, water recharging pits we have uh, we have completed in last 2 uh, years mainly in the rubber gardens so our objective was wherever we get land wherever we see any potential even if it it might be a small uh, potential but if, suppose the 3000 water recharging pits might be equivalent to uh, let's say more than uh, uh, 30 big ponds so that's how we are increasing our numbers uh, in addition uh, not only mgnrg we are also taking help of the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana where uh, the, we can use the Uh, mechanical equipments like jcb dozers for uh, renovation of the individual uh, water bodies of the farmers the objective is uh, to give the sustainable assets to the farmers but here we thought more from the uh, uh, decentralized water storage of the rain water in addition the uh, we had uh, taken the help of uh, jaika uh, they had a very systematic plan of uh, plantation so <clears throat> we focused uh, we identified almost 80 hectares of degraded as well as semi degraded forest land uh, that was also part of the catchment area of haura river and in that 80 hectares uh, we are going to plantation uh, do the plantation uh, uh, in next uh, year in the month of june but for that lot of uh, i mean i mean back end planning was involved in the year 2018 itself we calculated the what uh, how much uh, uh, how many number of plants would be required to 
to cover this 80 hectares of degraded or semi degraded uh, forest land and we have uh, planted almost 80000 uh, tall, tall polybag nursery see the tall polybag nursery the advantage is that the plants grow very fast uh, the average height of the plants is not less than 10 feet in a period of uh, uh, in a period of 3 uh, 3 years so this 80000 uh, plants are almost ready and uh, average height is already crossed uh, to more than uh, 10 feet some of the plants are already 15 feet or 17 feet so by the time it is going to be planted in those 80 hectares of land uh, it will be almost uh, uh, a thick canopy will be established uh, by the end of december 2021 so this is how we are planning and implementing so not only the uh, uh, decentralized storage of water is important but the, we are also focusing on the plantation equally and that too in a short span of time how how we can ensure that thick jungles are established the uh, soil erosion is prevented the flowing of uh, rainwater to the rivers is uh, protected so this this uh, this kind of uh, initiatives we are taking in the district and i'm uh, hopeful by 2021 all our initiatives would be completed uh, to 100% and then we can see the actual impact of all the this uh, decentralized water storage as well as plantations and uh, the water rain water harvesting activities very good uh, sandeep uh, very interesting uh, uh, perspective because uh, we always uh, tell about water conservation the second aspect of the benefit of the uh, the past rain being the uh, reduction in flooding you have highlighted it very nicely because you have experienced it uh, and probably the first day you went to the district you had uh, Uh, flood so that, that would have prompted you to do that i don't know but yeah. it is a very uh, interesting thing because we also now uh, we, have, we have come out with a term called crowd uh, saving we have heard of crowd sourcing because everybody put one one rupee and, and it becomes a huge amount that's the crowd uh, sourcing or crowd funding i'm coming out with the term crowd saving the other way around huge water body is formed because of drops of water coming from various places so if the crowd save that at that place this huge water body which you can from a menace or potential disaster can be saved so it is a crowd saving which is now in interest you have done exactly very well 3000 micro irrigation uh, uh, water pits very nice because every small small um, space created can hold a lot of water and that put together it can hold a lot of water very nice effort and also you have done very interesting thing about uh, convergence of various schemes as the uh, secretary was mentioning they had returned to all these uh, the chief secretaries uh, sir himself himself had returned to all chief secretaries uh, you uh, to con uh, to bring convergence of various government schemes to uh, use it for the conservation of water so you have done exactly that the pmksy and manbega and also jeka uh, funding and all these things have been taken up so um, as uh, rightly said the dm can be motivated to pull up all the resources in the district and plan according to the requirement of the district what lot of uh, things can be taken what is required in vestibular may not be uh, the act one in uh, jabalpur or what is Jab indoor is required uh, required in the indoor may not be applicable to you the river plantation is not everywhere so what is to the required to the local need the dms can decide so that's where the local uh, decent best planning very well done so my request uh, you also to please send us uh, the all write up and pictures also Um, uh, to that, our uh, email. I again repeat it for the sake of getting in your mind. It is you can easy to remember. Catch the rain, one word. Catch the rain. Dot nwm is National Water Mission. So catch the rain. Dot nwm at gmail dot com. Okay, please okay. send your uh, this writer and uh, your pictures of what you have done. I think it's very interesting because this is a very unique uh, thing which you have done. A lot of small small uh, places which you have done. Uh, in Daradun, uh, there's a Hesco, uh, Dr. Anil Joshi. He has done almost the same thing. He has done a lot of small small pits in the hillock, and he has revived a small small uh, rivulet there. Uh, that's very nice, uh, sir. Anything else from your side, sir? Oh, uh, not 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 much actually. Thank you, Asandeep. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, it's only goes to show that our country is very diverse actually, and the problems may not be the same everywhere, and so the. a uh, solutions also would not be one actually but today for example tripura is not known for water scarcity actually but then i have seen 
the area which I come from, North Bihar, at one point of time, there were plenty of water actually. We never thought that that region will also turn into a water scarce region. But today that has also turned into a water scarcity has become a problem. The same place, let's say you go to Darwanga, today it may be flooded, but last year the tankers had to be brought in there for the drinking water requirement. So one is that we must act in time so that we don't get into the similar kind of situation which many parts of the country is facing. And the second is, yes, problems would be diverse. But two things which is very important, not many of us, when we talk of rejuvenation of water bodies or conserving water bodies, we do not see the link of that between, let us say, river rejuvenation or urban flooding. When I had also joined as Director General National Mission for Clean Ganga, I did not realize that this groundwater plays such an important role for rejuvenation of a river. A lot of people talk of cleaning river. That's a, not a right term to use actually. It's a river rejuvenation, let's say rejuvenation of Ganga river. It's not a Ganga cleaning kind of. But then if you don't have water in the river, like someone said, uh, Professor Tare from IIT Kanpur, who is a, quite an expert on all these subjects, all defined basically a river is one which flows. If something which doesn't flow is not river. So by that definition, let's say Yamuna in Delhi for eight months ceases to be a river because it doesn't flow. It doesn't have water. So bringing water to the to, to a river is very important, whether it's an only small stream could be. But uh, it's very important. And how does that water come? That water comes through basically groundwater aquifers. So, so, so feeding our ground water aquifers is very necessary even for a rejuvenation of rivers. And similarly, Ashok has been hinting, lot, lot many people do not understand that how can water bodies and this um, is, is very important for urban flooding. See, where will the water which is falling in urban um, setup today go? We have concretized everywhere. So water is not able to percolate down the um, uh, surface actually. And then either we have uh, neglected our water bodies or we have blocked those channels. The channels through which water used to go to that water body. So the channel is blocked actually. So if you have concretized everything, you block the channel, you don't have water bodies. So where will the water go? The water will come and basically enter your house. So today one of the problem of water, uh, the urban flooding is so linked to basically our rejuvenation of traditional water bodies and water conservation. This should not be lost sight of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, have the uh, has uh, uh, Mayur and uh, uh, Bharat uh, joined? Show me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have, have others joined? They are, they are still in VC. Uh, so they have messaged okay, right. that extremely yes, sorry to yes, both you and the secretary, sir. Maybe in the next uh, version they can join because they are still stuck in uh, video conferencing. Okay. okay. Let's see. That, since uh, Ramanand sir is also not available, can we show at least his uh, video or something? Yes, so we have the special uh, video message by V. Ramachandran, sir, for Kazarin campaign. We can play that now, and then after that, we can have Jyoti Sharmaji with okay, us. Okay, sure. Yeah, so can we play V. Ramachandran's video, Prabhakar? The novel initiative of the National Water Mission to spread the message of catch the rain where it falls is uh, very laudable. At a time when our cities and towns are finding it difficult to provide the required amount of water, there is scarcity of water, we need to look at all possible sources of conserving water and making it available to people. There are two important points in this regard. One is that of catching the rain where it falls and storing it. The other is that of uh, protecting all the water bodies which we have in our cities and uh, towns. If you may recall the years back when the National Urban Renewal Mission was launched, uh, one of the reform measures to be taken up by the participating cities, uh, uh, towns, local bodies was that of um, uh, modifying the bylaws to provide for uh, rainwater harvesting provisions in all the buildings of the cities and towns. Some cities and towns bodies did it. There are many more which still need to do it. We have over 4,000 urban local bodies in the country. So the message has to reach out to all the 4,000 plus urban local bodies so that 
every city and town is conscious of this uh, program, conscious of this mission and the importance of this mission because this is a service which we can do not only to our generation but also to the future generation by making use of water which is the nature's gift for our purposes. The second point is about water bodies which we have in different parts of our towns and cities. We have tanks, ponds, we have other water bodies. Unfortunately, they face neglect. No one have, has taken them seriously. So what is required is um, each urban local body should list, notify where these are located and make it a habit among residents to respect it, to promote it. And that way water preserved there will also come in handy for the city or the town and it's also in the interest of uh, the environment which we are talking about uh, so much. So if these two measures are pushed very, very aggressively, like the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan was taken up in the country, if every citizen comes to know about this, if every resident becomes aware of this, if every builder, every building owner is conscious of this, there is a lot we can achieve by preserving the rainwater where it falls and it can be made use of and to that extent our dependence on trans water which will be transported from a distance comes down. And this is what is important and I am glad the water mission has taken this up as a, as a drive, as a mission and I do hope that this message reaches out to all our cities and towns and they are able to take this up and it is possible for all cities and towns to provide for rainwater harvesting facilities in all the buildings. The students can come in, they would be great champions of a uh, cost like this. They can come in actively, all the builders, all those who are conscious of nature, all those who want to promote nature and water, they can happily participate in this and con thereby contribute to the future of the nation uh, in the form of environmental protection. I'm very glad to know that EPIC Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, so it was a uh, virtual virtual uh, presentation because it is in a visual virtual platform. Uh, we, uh, uh, sir could not come, so he had a virtual presence in this virtual meeting. <laughs> anyway, it's very interesting. Uh, as uh, uh, important as PMs are the uh, NGOs working in the field because uh, NGOs can mobilize a lot of people for our campaign. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Sharma, he, she is the president of uh, uh, Force Nonprofit. And as Secretary has mentioned, uh, she'll be uh, talking to uh, a larger audience. We have lined up uh, as per direction Secretary, almost 60,000, 70,000 people to come for the next water talk. Hopefully, we'll achieve it and live up to serve expectation. Um, uh, so we are the next water talk coming on 21st of August. We have returned to all of the 50, 60 universities. All schools have been identified and uh, our platforms have also been ready for your, for your delivering your message. Again. But today, we require uh, just a very short presentation for about uh, five minutes on uh, how NGOs are helping uh, in this uh, campaign, uh, particularly uh, in Delhi, because we, we, uh, we had a meeting with a lot of NGOs, resident welfare associations last week, and many of them were having their own problem, and everybody generally keeps on telling how much money you are giving us. So not really looking at the money, we want water to be conserved. So NGOs, how can they really help us in conservation of water and also join hands with district administration because your outreach is much better. Jyoti Sharma, please elaborate on that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let me first start with congratulating uh, all of you on the excellent work you're doing. Uh, NGOs actually come into existence because we're trying to cover some gaps that are there in service delivery to the people. But if you cover the gaps the way you do it right now, I'm going to be out of an NGO soon enough. So thank you for doing this. Um, um, as I, um, um, you asked about how NGOs can, can contribute uh, to the effort. And so I'll just focus my talk on that. The core cool thing that I think uh, that NGOs uh, can do a good job of doing is to actually dispel the myths that surround rainwater harvesting uh, or water conservation. And one of the biggest myths which actually discourages people from trying to do anything that has to do with reviving a water body or doing rainwater harvesting is this myth that there isn't enough rain. And so what I did was, what you see on the screen is a calculation of, I, I've used the census figures and the average annual rainfall figures as given by Central Groundwater Board 
and based on that i calculated how much each of these areas um the the dns uh, you know jahan ke dns aaj hamare saath hain in areas mein what is the per person per day rainfall that we getting and so delhi the most populous city in the country gets 148 liters per person per day as rainfall puducherry gets about 1500 liters per person per day tripura about 17 and a half thousand liters madhya pradesh about 10 and a half thousand liters and uttarakhand about 22000 liters per person per day now why these figures are important is because they help dispel this notion ki jab pani nahi barsta barish to hoti nahi hai ab bees din to barish padti hai so what's the point karenge bhi to kya fayda hoga this just helps to bring a uh, highlight the fact that there is no water and what we need to do now is to just catch it and store it in a way that it can be used which is precisely what you're trying to do through revival of water bodies and through rainwater harvesting the second myth is that uh, that you know we work very hard on dispelling and which works like yours and other ngos helps to move is this notion that it's not possible everywhere that's not true the good thing about the uh, jal shakti abhiyan is that it has activated so many different people technical people uh, uh, service providers governments ngos and people because of which multiple methods of growing catching rain are are being able to be showcased so you have all many different kinds of technologies i will not show them today i'll reserve them though i do have it on this presentation that you have but uh, in the interest of keeping the talk short i will talk about them in my talk on the 21st but basically all i want to say is there is a technology for every kind of soil type every kind of uh, uh, weather type and so anybody who wants to conserve water can surely do it without any problem and so ngos and government can join hands to create more awareness about that the next is that uh, you know i don't know i i probably think a little differently from many other uh, in my uh, area of work which is that i don't waste my time playing blame games i don't think that it makes sense to say people don't do what they have to do or government doesn't do what has to do what i found in my experiences if you go with an idea which is a good idea and if you are sensitive to the need of the other person then whether it is the government or the people i have never had a problem finding support from whoever wants to uh, so when we we had a water body which had to be revived um, and um, we worked we've never had a problem in working with government functionaries in giving us the necessary permissions or the support it takes its own time and we have to be prepared for that but i do not see any obstruction or work i just see uh, uh, that work becomes faster when we work positive minded attitude ke sath we work towards solving each other's problem rather than finding fault in each other so there that's a big role that we can play as being uh, connectors of the people and the government and the corporates to try and make things happen on ground and the other thing that ngos prove is that solutions do not lie in big things being done by big people a lot of solutions actually come from small things being done by small people like this picture so now this is from kerala your uh, district and there were thousands of such uh, dried up wells that were used and converted to rainwater harvesting structures with a tremendous impact water levels rose up So one of the things we need to remember about water usage is that water usage tends to be very localized in our country where we have so many tube wells now tube wells are withdrawing water from a very localized area and so when you do a small effort it feeds into that localized area it helps that tube well and so if there is a place where localized efforts are needed it is in and so ngo can play a big role in creating many such models and helping the government uh, do small efforts on a large scale so that is um, another thing uh, that can be done you've come up with this excellent notion of rain centers and i'm happy to share with you that we're already running one such rain center in partnership with the delhi government uh, here in delhi and uh, i know that bangalore is doing that too and so um, you're right that it's been done already in some places and that it can play a big role in giving people guidance uh, at the right time 
in the right way as per government norms so that there is no disconnect between what is expected of people and what people actually do uh, on ground uh we've been talking a lot about floods and droughts uh, in uh, all the comments that have been coming up uh, and uh, the fact is that both floods and droughts are two sides of the same coin they are symptoms of the same disease which is poor water management and unless people governments and ngos come together this water management can not be done in a sustainable manner so another role that we can actually help in playing is actually in terms of ensuring sustainability of effort and bringing all the stakeholders together so that not only is the work done the right way it is also done in a manner that it is sustained year after year after year i saw um, in in one of your earlier episode you had uh, uh, somebody from urja in delhi atul goel talking about uh, you know he was highlighting some problems how people don't maintain the water harvesting structures and i am going to use that as an example to illustrate the good role that ngos can play so one of the things we do every year is to reach out to corporate and say here there are these rainwater harvesting structures already existing on ground why don't you invest some minor funds on to just helping these communities keep these rainwater harvesting structures running and every year we've had success in getting some donor to help uh, such rwas out with the work that they've done so um so um so you know i will close with uh, one last comment which is that you mention again and again each one of you has mentioned that people need to stay deeply connected to the cause of water for them to participate in water conservation efforts and what i would like to add to that is that uh, you know we've introduced this notion this concept of something called self sustainability problem is that when a technical expert talks about sustainability he talks about it in the environmental sense but when a person talks about it an ordinary person he talks about it in the sense of do, do i have water in my tap so i think one of the biggest uh, journeys that ngos and government have to travel together with the people is to make people see the connection between the water that comes out of their taps and the water that's there in the river or the lake or the uh, you know the integrated water system that exists all the pictures you've seen like like for example this picture that this picture that's there on the screen right now is a picture uh, of a water body uh, can, you, can you go back to that picture please uh, this picture uh, the earlier one anyway that's okay yeah right now uh, we spoken about revival of water bodies but as i'm sure a lot of the district uh, magistrates sitting here uh, would know is that the problem of water bodies is because that they are dry or encroached but the more urbanized an area gets the problem is that there is dirty water coming into it so unless you address that problem deepening it or creating water channels to get water into it is not going to help and so again now that's where an ngo along with people comes into the picture and so this is an example of where we made a constructed wetland system along with the drainage so that people don't have to worry about throwing dirty water into their drain they they still have dirty water coming into the drain but before the water enters the water body it gets cleaned and so the water body is absolutely clean and it has fishes and it has birds and it has boating Uh, that's happening there and it's at a small level it's not a big big level point so um so these are some of the things we can do i'd like to take you to the last slide uh, the next one please now this is again just like you have some efforts you have made in terms of uh, uh, getting people to share baseline data about water uh, uh, assets uh, i i look at every dried water body or every dried up tube well as an asset and so like you are making those efforts we will also launch this code uh, to check and provide an app to help people do good work on ground to uh, make a baseline data of such assets that exist and more than that we have actually uh, also tried to incentivize them so what we are doing is we are introducing this concept of what are carrots and credits so for every 10000 liters of water saved we are giving people one water carrot and we're going to tie up with companies to give them rewards like reward points 
So what the point I'm trying to make is that people are interested. Government and NGOs joining hands. What we can do is make them see a self-interest in getting associated with the cause of water. And uh, I will talk more about it in my next session. So thank you for the opportunity and congratulations again on the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Jyoti. Uh, very uh, nice. We, we always uh, um, try to blame each other, NGOs and the government. This is one sector where we would like to work together and uh, bring the connect with the people. Very uh, nice talk and uh, the, you have articulated it very well. Uh, as uh, you said in the last uh, video content we had with the stakeholders in Delhi, some of the Delhi uh, Del Delco and some of the resident welfare associations were complaining that uh, whatever in what our structures were built, uh, many of them are not being maintained properly. So we have given uh, a solution to that. Uh, probably we'll work on uh, the maintenance part. The resident welfare associations and the uh, NGOs associated with that will have to ensure that uh, these. Uh, uh, structures which are built for the sake of getting permissions from occupation certificate clearance and all are maintained every year and uh, uh, kept in the working conditions to cash the rain every year. Very nice of you. Um, so, so we meet for the, uh, uh, the talk on 20, uh, 21st of October, but uh, kindly join us and send, uh, and send us uh, whatever good. Uh, Experience we have through our email, as I said, castorain.nwm.gmail.com. Uh, Any suggestions also which you have, we can send it to Chris so that we can work together and uh, uh, try to catch rain before this month ends. Um, so, this is the way we, uh, we are uh, coming to the end of it, sir. Uh, I would request the uh, secretary to uh, make uh, some uh, concluding remarks. Sir, I, have, I think I have. Uh, talked enough actually. First of all, uh, thank you Jyoti ji for uh, your talk and we are eagerly waiting to uh, hear your talk again on 21st. And don't worry, you will never get out of business because uh, our country is too big. Our problems are uh, too many actually. We talk of uh, one particular example somewhere and uh, let's say somebody talks of one Hebrew Bazaar, but then we have to make some 7 lakh Hebrew Bazaars actually. So it's a huge task. And as you very rightly said, I, I, I do believe in that philosophy that there are no we and they actually. A lot of people say that the government is on one side. So for them, uh, government is somebody who is uh, not discharging a duty. On the other side, in government, a lot of people feel uh, not very, they talk very, very, very well of NGOs also. Yes, there may be uh, bad people in the government, there may be bad NGOs also, but there are good people in the government, there are good NGOs. And what is needed is basically they work together. And what Few, few points which you have made was very good. Like many times we say that even for small things, government may have problem in making funds available because government has lots of rules and regulations. We see our strength is maybe we have more funds. Our strength is also we have more man manpower. But your strength is that you are more flexible actually. And maybe your connect with the people sometimes is better than our connect with the people. So that flexibility, for example, you said maybe mm, corporates, it is not that and corporates did not be very big corporates as uh, our uh, 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 Arun said that it is not only when we talk of corporates, we talk of Tata Steel, we talk of ONGC, we talk of Hindustan Lever, we talk of such companies actually. So there are very small companies which, which one might not have heard of actually, but they all are, they are all are willing. There is a small money, it is not very huge money as you said that maybe uh, utilizing a defunct bore well for a groundwater recharge or making those rainwater harvesting. Maybe first time you spend 35,000, 30,000 rupees on that. Now it may be that you require only a couple of thousand. So that couple of thousand maybe in government system sometimes become very difficult to come. Not that NWO doesn't have money, but it will be very difficult for us to make that kind of money available. But what is more important if you can uh, uh, source that money from a big, small corporates or or, or maybe even a multilateral agency and there are a lot of philanthropic organizations also working both uh, in, in this country. So that's also a model you have seen. So very nice. And at the end, I would not like to add much. We have uh, 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 basically uh, uh, feedback from two district magistrates and uh, also from one non-government organizations. Uh, it, would have been, it would have been good to have the other two district magistrates also. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it. So this is also a lesson from us 
that there would be dms are very busy people so even on a saturday in fact we have kept this meeting on saturday hoping that the dms would not be as busy today actually but uh, so that one lesson is that maybe instead of if we, if we really need uh, uh, three people to speak we should perhaps invite five people or we should also have a standby arrangement that if maybe if the dm is not able to come then maybe his uh, cto or tdc or whatever is called who is equally well conversant with this work could substitute for him actually and the other shok i would like a couple of things one is that uh, at least like water talk we do every month but if we do that then uh, these kind of people take a lot of time so maybe we could make it as a weekly event and maybe saturday or whatever it could be a good uh, time when we also all are generally free by the by a lot so maybe saturday and then maybe a timing could also be fixed and even though see we kept one hour but one hour is generally not good enough for these kind of things you can need four speakers like if we have basically five, out of six speakers basically who planned were planned today for district my state and jyoti ji and ramchandra sir basically we were having our uh, only four of six three of six actually and still we have taken more than a um, an hour so maybe one and a half hours two hours should be the um, right duration and maybe you can fix a day and time that every saturday let's say have it from whatever 10 10:30 to 12 or something and so that would be known to the people in advance so that both the speakers could also plan in advance and maybe those viewers they also could plan in advance and about sharing see the state of only they send you a mail what perhaps is needed is that maybe in the department website on your website you should create a corner actually where uh, success stories could be uh, shared by the people directly kind of maybe uh, i don't know whether they will need a uh, some kind of a password or something or how do they go, go go about it you can find out but there could be a corner which talks of the something like a best initiatives that good good initiatives or something of that sort so that can be done so i think uh, we have talked enough uh, today and uh, uh, of course that formal job for many years will do but uh, i i must thank you and um, the pack and as, as as well as all the uh, uh, panelists who are present uh, today so thank you very much so uh, i just you. add to what you said sir uh, see uh, i don't know the collectors are looking at their emails we had been sending lot of emails yesterday also i sent an email to all the collectors asking them to share their views we have also an interactive website is also there uh, where we, we have shared a password with you and uh, username and id also been sent to you somewhere a month back asking you to upload your uh, programs and photos from your uh, nic system have a look at it it will come from md.nwm@gmail.com you search for it probably you get it md.nwm@gmail.com so uh, as secretary said uh, a platform has been created also see some many times people find it very difficult you remember you search the password and uh, forget it that's why i said you can send the email also in our website uh, thank you sir coming yeah yeah so uh, with this i would like to uh, thank our esteemed speakers shri up singh honorable secretary minister of jal shakti government of india for uh, agreeing to inaugurate the series of this webinar on of apple dialogue on rain water harvesting and catch rain campaign uh, to g ashok kumar uh, honorable rishan secretary mission director national water mission minister of the government of india dr sandeep mahatme district magistrate west tripura dr t arun district collector purusheri dr ramachandran but uh, unfortunately there was some technical glitch but at least we could have played his video which we have already promoted in various uh, digital media uh, this also to in, uh, inform all of our viewers and all, all our esteemed speakers that uh, we got more than 250 plus live attendees in facebook and youtube of this webinar uh, which has happened in just couple of uh, two days and we still have more than 250 plus uh, live viewers in facebook and youtube and as the as up singh sir has said again and again and we also uh, reiterate our commitment that in coming weeks we'll ensure that uh, we have district minister participation and also municipal administrative participation more uh, and maybe uh, but you know sir it happens with government uh, thing that uh, we say in our uh, this some problem with your voice audio
हेलो हेलो Anyway, I think he is not there, so I, on behalf of him, I will thank you. So, uh, as uh, Secretary Sir said, we will work out a schedule and uh, work out a weekly program on that because it takes some time to organize these uh, people. Sir, it, so three days we could get these uh, people from four corners of the country, but again, they had some other uh, official uh, engagement coming in between. So, we will work on that, sir, and try to organize it regularly. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, thanks, thank everybody. You. So, have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Thank you.